Hi everyone, today is November 11th, 2017, and this is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger. I'm Deck Tech. And the past week we finally saw the event start that we've been waiting for for so long, the Kaiba Cup. Um, and it actually works a completely different way. Like the, the way of entry is a bit different than what we expected, but I feel like a lot of things were done kind of last minute or... Like a final evaluation of where everyone was in the game, and then Konami decided to make the change to the game, uh, to the Kaiba Cup the way it is right now. But uh, we've both been playing a bit of the Kaiba Cup, so uh, Deck Tech, where are you right now in that? Well, I spent the first week, I guess, before the Kaiba Cup uh, came out. I, I spent some time testing various decks and um, found myself, I lost a couple ranks. And just decided that, you know, Cyber Angels was just head and shoulders above everything else that I was trying. And it was a deck that I know pretty well well because I've played it a lot. And uh, maybe even better than most people because I'd been playing with the uh, post-nerf version for a while, testing it out. So uh, I switched back to that once the Kaiba Cup went live. And I've played like about 20 games in the Kaiba Cup and I've only dropped one which has put me at level 10 so far. So it's going pretty smoothly. Um, We're going to talk a little bit more about it below, but the first couple rounds have been pretty easy in my experience. It was was, was fun, yeah. Um, I've been playing... uh, Well, first of all, I didn't expect to get into the Kaiba Cup because of what we talked about before, but um, everyone was pretty much allowed in, and I was allowed in. Um, And I've been playing Ancient Gears just because that's what I've been playing in PvP, and uh, particularly, um, I've been doing pretty well in the mirror matches. Um, that's something I pride myself in winning the mirror matches, just because uh, knowing what the cards do and how to interact with other Ancient Gear decks, even though they're not all the same. Um, I got to Duelist level 12, but then I lost some games, so I'm, at, I'm currently at 11. Um, and I've actually lost against some interesting decks like Harpies. Um, I felt like I went back in time and got beat by <laughs> old harpies, like the first Kaiba Cup, and also some Dark Paladin, Black Luster Soldier deck, which, you know, they just they negate spells and stuff, so... Um, well, that game also began with them twistering off my Ancient Gear Castle, so it's kind of the same thing with Harpies, where they took out my castle, and I was just playing behind the whole game. Yeah. You were saying the Harpies deck sounded exactly like the old one. You were t- telling me it had the, the, the duck in it and everything. Yeah. And this person had, like, you know how you enter a game, they have the icons to see what ranks you got? Like, if you got King of Games, you got the King of Games icon? Yeah. They, this person had two gaps in between. So they had, like, one icon and two empty ones and one icon. So this guy probably, like, took a break, right? For, like, two months. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess that's, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> so, um... Well, that's yeah, good. I mean, the Kaiba Cup's bringing people in who haven't been playing in a while. Yeah, and, they're, and they they probably heard that you're going to lose your account if you don't play in six months, so they decided to jump right back. Oh, well, that's, that's what I was thinking. The <laughs> Kaiba Cup is happening like three or four times this year, I guess, is the new yeah. system. So um, luckily that's more frequent than every six months. Yep. But it's good that people who took a break can beat me, who a guy who plays every day, so it's good to know. <laughs> You're you're doing a service to the community. Yeah, it's win, it's win trading right here. Uh, um, all right, let's talk about the news. We're gonna talk more about the Kaiba Cup later, but we're gonna get to some other topics first. First of all, last week's uh, Duel Links Pro Ten t- tournament happened. Um, right after we recorded, it was on a Saturday too, and the format was two decks each and uh, two different characters, two different skills, and two different archetypes. So it's the first tournament we've seen that has that feature of two different archetypes. Uh, So you can't bring two Cyber Angel decks with the same, with different characters or skills. Um, And they also have the new ban restrict list. And this was before the official ban list uh, went active on Monday. Um, First place, Tut Pup. Uh, We should all know who he is. Uh, EU representative in the WCS. His deck, Three Star Demotion Ninjas. Uh, and also Mindscan Cyber Angels. Both these decks seem pretty uh, standard for what they are, but the Mindscan Cyber Angels has an interesting ingredient, which you like quite a bit. 
Um, we're talking about the mix of the uh, the three slots. So essentially, after the nerves, we're seeing kind of like the shaping of a standard looking list for cyber angels and it might just be tut pups he runs four searchers uh well in addition to the two petite cyber just so i guess six total searchers and two of them are the birds and two of them are senjus and that's because you the petite angels are less able to grab your ritual spells so i think that's why you switch over from three to uh from a three one split to a two two split and then they're running four rituals, whereas I've been running five. And they're just running all of these specific um, Cyber Angel rituals, the best ones. And then that leaves three tech slots. And in those three slots, he uses enemy controller, one enemy controller, and two noblemen of extermination. And uh, I think that's the card you were talking about because I have been enjoying that. I tried it out a little bit um, before, but not much. And it seems to become, it's become kind of close to standard. That's a little bit of a debate we had before the show. And um, it's it's really good in the deck. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But this looks like this might be kind of the new standard build i think dk showed this on one of his streams as um uh, as like the cyber angels build so i don't know if he grabbed tut putts tut pups list or if they were working on it together or if this is just from his discord and tut pup copied it or whatever but um it's a definitely really solid list these days and it's important to note that this list is from saturday which is before the new box came out so there might have been some changes since then. Uh, we don't know, but um, still a pretty good list right now. Uh, yeah, like, and the, play, the changes would have been the Saphira, but we're going to talk about that later as well. Yeah, Saphira. Um, it's quite a debate I think about this Saphira. Is, yeah, I think this is still the list, but we'll see. Second place bookworm form. Not a surprise that he brought Destiny Draw Amazonus. He's the kind of guy who who's like number one with that deck in tournament situation, so he'll just bore you to death and annoy <laughs> you with that deck. Second, The second list is super interesting. It's Cyber Angel's Balance, but it also runs uh, Bacon Saver and Sergeant Electro. Yeah, so the reason for that is the balance, right? He wants the 15-5 split, and I'm assuming he just doesn't have the other two Sonic Birds. Um that's my best guess, but maybe that's not the case. I mean, he might have actually just wanted the Sergeant Electro and the Bacon Saber. Um, obviously, those are solid cards, and Sergeant Electro will cover the spot that um, was being covered by Nobleman of Extermination to try to avoid these powerful traps and stuff and get your one-turn kills in. But it's, it's a little bit odd to see. The, the Bacon Saver not being in a Red Eye Zombie deck is super unconventional, but I've pointed out in the past that the card is better than Sphere Rebo in some cases. Like, it saves your monsters. It, the way it goes both ways is it's sometimes better than Sphere Rebo. Yeah. And you use it for tributes, uh, ritual tributes, obviously, in this deck, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Third place, Lawler. Uh, let's see, this is a... Red Eye Zombie Beatdown. Seems pretty standard. Uh, anti Magic Arrows definitely fits well. Um, three Mirror Walls. That's kind of a debate. Well, I guess, yeah. Because sometimes, sometimes people mix in uh, Wall of Disruption, but this looks really standard. Uh, typically, they have more of the Samurai Skulls, but uh, fewer monsters. And Mind Scan, Cyber Angels, a lot of three ofs, no Sonic Birds, three Senjus. Mm-hmm. Yep. Fourth place is Yasser Zero. Yasser Zero brought Ancient Gears. This version, uh, actually, it's, it's interesting. It has Heavy Knights, and it has... Well, Sergeant Electro is pretty standard, but it doesn't run um, the Beasts, the Ancient Gear Beasts. Um, and 
also brought Destiny Draw, Amazon is Burn. Uh, different from Bookworm Forms a bit. And it has, but it has, it has Warm Worm, so it's kind of like a Burn Mill deck. Yeah, he seems to like um, hybrid lists because the... Um, Jesus, what are they called? The Gears list looks yeah. like... It's also kind of a hybrid one. It looks like kind of an aggro control thing. It has a lot of those cards that were in the uh, Guardian Statue control decks. And right. he's kind of combined it with the Ancient Gears. So um, he's got the, on the one end, he's got his hybrid Burn Mill. And on the other, he's got his hybrid Ancient Gears control thing. Yeah. Ancient Gears is actually yeah. Um, DK calls it a control deck, and it, the channel is called Ancient Gears Control, and that's because you have the um, Sergeant Electros and also the Beast. But this one's missing the Beast, so you're pretty much the Knight. I mean, the Ancient Gear Knight doesn't hit into like it doesn't negate the traps right away. You have to normal summon him again. So this mm-hmm. one is less good at at negating the traps and the flip effects. But whatever. Yeah. But he's got more of the beats. Yep. Fifth, sixth place, Harambe. Harambe Bay. Uh, Red Eyes. Red Eyes Zombie. Uh, Beatdown. Uh, pretty standard list here. Uh, has a Storm, though, which is, which is interesting. And three star Demotion Ninjas. Not much to say about that. Yeah, I mean, these are, they're both pretty close to standard, and neither of us plays Ninja, so we can't comment too much on that, but it looks to be about what we see people playing. Yep. Fifth, sixth place, drop, Mindscan Cyber Angels, uh, pretty similar to the previous list from Todd Pop, and also, Restart Venus with Destiny Hero Plasma. This is a deck we've heard of before. Um, I've seen it before on the Duel Links meta. Uh, it's a really niche deck. Creature Seizure, Transmodify, two Anti-Magic Arrows. Yeah, it's a really interesting deck. The Transmodify is, is kind of funny to me. Um, I guess you have... He has a 2, 3, 4 chain in that he's got the Shine Balls into Venus, into um, the Dark Witch Dunamis, and, or Dunamis Dark, whatever. Um, so, you know, I guess you can use that to modify your guys into what you need, uh, but it's a little bit weird. You don't see that card. I've never seen that card before, so I had to figure out what it was. Um, and the new uh, capture or Creature Seizure is an upgrade to um what was it called the swords the the yugi drop the swords yeah it's a hmm that's i'm not i'm not familiar with venus that's why that's what uh... well it's the one where you give them one of your monsters you destroy one of theirs and give them one of yours it's like Uh... magical swords or something like that Mystic, Mystic box. box. Mystic yeah. box. Thank yeah. you. The box has swords in it. My bad. Um, uh, so anyway, this one it's it's very similar, except you're stealing their guy. So you get the you get a little bit more of an advantage. And I guess yeah. I, I mean, it's just a fun deck. You're kind of working on a bit of a control uh, aspect of it. It looks like it since it runs the two anti-magic arrows that it's trying to get kind of a more of a one-turn kill type thing than maybe controlling the board, but it has the ability to do both. So there's a lot of steel effects, and he only runs one order to charge, whereas before that was kind of part of the core of the deck. So it's an interesting new take on this old archetype that I, that I really liked when it was around before, so maybe I'll try this out. Uh, Some place, Adobo Boy... Mind scan Cyber Angels, pretty standard list there. 2 2 split on Sonic and Senju. And also Red Eye Zombie Beatdown. This is also very standard. Uh, both decks have a Curse of Anubis, though, so I guess he really likes that card. Yeah. yeah. And 7th place, also DK 3K DD Drew. 
Uh, Red Eye Zombie with two anti magic arrows seems pretty standard there. And also Mind Scan Cyber Angels. Uh, five searchers, though. Um, two Econs. No no tricks, really, this deck. Yeah, I mean, I guess he, he switches one of those um, three tech slots that Tupup was using for uh, the extra searcher. And I guess everyone's on the four ritual train, which is a little surprising because I had upped it to five. Um, or, well, kept it at five. Whereas other people are just going with four. Yep. And just as a wrap up, we did not see any Toon Barrel Dragons. And there's more, you know, this is probably like a last hurrah for Cyber Angels and Red Eyes Zombies. Um, six of eight, six of the top eight brought Cyber Angels and four brought Red Eyes Zombies. Only one person brought Ancient Gears here. Uh, and you have, you have a bit of a note to talk about for this, uh, th- these decks, right? Yeah, I think. Um, some people might call like this stale because we've been seeing red eyes and cyber angels for a while now. And I just think that it's worth noting that there's some value to having a settled metagame going into something like the Kaiba Cup, where this is supposed to be a competition to qualify for the world championship. So it would make sense for this to be high level competition and uh even the even though the early stages have been pretty easy i do expect it to pick up because only a limited number of people will be able to move on to the next stage and uh, some people are really going to want that so when the meta is quote stale when everyone has like the best decks kind of figured out that is when you tend to have the better players uh, rise to the top because you can't get cheap wins through tricking people. Um, you could, the flip side of that is that you could call those, uh, those cheap wins through tricking. You could call them like smart, um, deck building choices that, uh, unexpected and you win through the value of your deck building. But we've seen kind of this push in other games where they prefer to have the value be in the play instead of the deck buildings. A lot of uh, games will have open deck lists, so the surprise factor is almost zero in that sense. And they just like to reward the highest level play. And so by having a more settled metagame, your in-game skill and your knowledge of that settled metagame uh, can help put you above the other players. And I think that's maybe what they were going for um, in this instance. And maybe if not, what they were going for is definitely a happy little um, consequence of it, I guess. So it's okay, I think, at this point that the meta is a little bit um, stale. I think maybe they were waiting to shake it up a lot more after. Um, and we'll see what happens during and after the Kaiba Cup to see if that theory is correct or if everything's kind of just falling in this way. Yeah, the Kaiba Cup just seems... A bit more diverse, but we're both not really high up. Like, we're not close to 20 yet. We're kind of halfway there. So we'll see if it's a bit like this um, moving forward. Yeah, I also suspect that halfway through the ranks is not halfway there. Because like you said, it gets harder. So I think um, halfway to 20 is probably closer to like 15 or something like that. Yeah, We'll see. Uh, next item, Jesse Anderson in the GX world. We discussed him last week, but he's here for a couple more days, the 15th. Um, and this is a first, this is the first one where they have like a timer for him. Like they have like a note saying like, oh, he's almost here. Oh, he's coming. You know, (laughs) the first time it's the first time you can actually control how, how much he shows up. Right. Oh yeah. I love this change. I thought, I think this is like way better than the old way that they had done the um, roaming duelists. I think this is definitely the way they need to keep doing it. It, it is. It rewards you for actually playing the game instead of just rewarding you for logging on every once in a while to check how it's going. Um, and it's nice to get that feedback where you're like, okay, I'm working towards it. It's not just randomly going to show up at some point. So I really like the change. And he shows up automatically too. Like he sometimes he just shows up and like they say he's gonna come and he's, but he's already there. Like if you like 
did it overnight. He's he's already there. Um, and it doesn't take much for him to get here. I'd say like four or five duels, and then he's here. Um, and the data mine rewards were correct. We we predicted all the cards. Um, and it's still better to farm uh, now, even though the card's kind of useless at the moment. You never know when the Rainbow Dragon's going to come in. He, he's, it's probably when he's going to be playable. It's going to be his, his his level up reward, I think. That's probably mm. how it's going to work. Uh, what have you been using to farm him? I've been farming him kind of going old school with uh, Cerberus and, and using Draw Sense Light, which is something that Crowler has. And... Um, it's been working pretty well. Usually, Jesse will only attack... I mean, depending on if you go first or second, he'll attack with one or maybe two guys, and you can use an enemy controller if the second guy is going to kill you. Um, then you, you obviously activate the Draw Sense Light. Almost every single one of his guys will activate it if they attack in. I think Carbuncle does not, but he doesn't usually attack with Carbuncle... Uh, turn one um, and then you just play a couple spells and sort of gets big and then he can't he doesn't attack into it anymore if your life points are too low then he'll use the direct attack as carbuncle but that's only happened to me like once or twice and after that I just kind of kept better track of my life points and when we had for a little while we had a bonus that would give you the free 1000 on your dual assessment and at that point, it was really easy to get 8K with uh, this method. Now you have to actually try to manipulate your life points a little bit so that you get the life point bonuses. Um, but so I guess the word of advice is to just do that on the last turn if you can. Uh, keep it higher until the last turn so that he doesn't get tempted to attack in with Carbuncle. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing the Blue Eyes reinforcements. So. You know, you get the blue eyes out with Ancient Rules or Kaiba Man. Kaiba Man is the only warrior in the deck, so that's how reinforcements works. Um, mm. yeah. And then you get the blue eyes, Ultimate Dragon, Deep Divers, uh, Blue Eyes Summoner, plus um, Wonder Wand for drawing. Sometimes you draw three cards, so that's pretty good. Vassal, yeah, it works pretty well. Um, his drops have been really bad for me, though. I have only have one of the... Mammoth and the uh, another card, uh, the the fiends, uh, Sky Blaster, Phantom Sky Blaster. I only have one of each, mm. and I have like close to thirty of the rares now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't notice last time I faced him, so I'm not sure where I'm at. But I know that I, I definitely have to keep going. So it's good that he's around for another couple of days. Uh, banned restricted list and skill balance changes that went live on Monday. Uh, we knew about these for a while because they, they tell us every day pretty much that it's, it's the top header to let people know. Uh, yep. And I actually have a lot of decks that I can't even use now, but I'm just too lazy to fix them, so they're just going to be sitting here. Like, like I, I have so many Red Eye Zombies decks that have <laughs> the spirits in them. So Yeah, I have uh, a couple too. But we're going to talk about some of the skills that got changed. Creator, which was the Pegasus skill. It got a buff, so we actually have some pretty good cards. Um, you could get Monster Reborn, or as they call it in the first episode, Reborn the Monster. Uh, Sakuretsu Armor, which would destroy a monster that attacks your monster, so that's pretty good. Lightning Vortex, which is a budget. Raigeki, which is still very good. You discard one card and destroy all of your enemies' monsters. And also Harpy's Feather Duster. So these are all uh, bomb cards, I would say. like They just blow up the board. Yeah, they were talking about it on um, Reddit, how the card that it gives you depends a bit on the game state, uh, which is interesting. Uh, at the very least, they said that's how the skill used to work, and they think that that's how it works now as well. But uh, essentially, if your opponent has like one big monster, then it'll more likely give you the Sakuretsu armor. Or if they have a, a full board of monsters, it'll more likely give you the Lightning Vortex, stuff like that. So... That's a really interesting twist on the skill that I didn't realize. So it makes Pegasus believe in the heart of the cards, and it makes it better. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Definitely better that way. Uh, it's a cool skill, so um, Reborn the Monster. It sounds like a bad translation, right? 
Yeah, they have a ton of those. And, they, <laughs> like, the thing that I hate the most about the first season, well, like, the first series, is they always use cards as quick plays. It's like, oh, I'm going to attack you directly. No, I'm going to use my Monster Reborn to save my life points. They do that so much in the first series. Well, in the yeah, in the first series, the cards have almost no relation to what they actually do in the trading card game. Yeah, the thing I, I appreciate about GX is they actually follow all the rules. Well, I guess they're in school, so I guess they have to follow the rules. That's, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Number one rule of school. Yeah. Uh, and then the new balance. Uh, a lot of people, you know, we didn't really know how the skill was work going to work. We had two different theories, and it was going to go on how people collected data like they're gonna have to collect data to see you know what distribution how more random balance became and um the skill got reworked a redditor x def x ran a bunch of tests and um the conclusion is that the deck divides your cards by three so it allocates three from your hand based on balance and then one random card that kind of makes sense it was just one different card from the uh, that that doesn't reflect your distribution of your deck. So to make this work, you have to use sevens instead of fives now. So seven of a card, and then like seven of another, and then six of another, basically. Right. So if, if you have a 20-card get deck, then and you divide 20 by 3, you get 6.67 repeating, and something like that. So the... Uh, the point that he was making is that you need seven to guarantee that you get one of those cards. And then if you, the six slot though is very likely because it's close to the uh, 6.6 6 something. And also because uh, you get that fourth draw that is just random from the rest of your deck. So DK actually said that you need to, you just put six in if you wanted, uh, I forget what deck he was playing, but he was playing a deck where he wanted just to have the minimum correct monsters for it, and, and in that deck he was running six, and I don't know if um, his position is that six will guarantee it, or if it's just close enough that you're willing to take that very small percentage that you get no monster, but it looks like, uh, based on all of the information we're seeing that seven is your guaranteed and six is your very likely. And then, um, if you have a seven, seven, six, you have, you know, an equal chance of getting a second copy of one of those just about equal. I took a screenshot of a, a deck he was testing out and he only had five of uh, a monster. So I guess he was playing a really greedy deck. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That oh. decayed. Um, so we have the link to the post if you want to see all the math and how he came up with that. Uh, Galactic Origins came out Monday. We went through all the cards we saw that excited us for the first time um, last week, so you can check that out. But we have some updates on some of the cards. Uh, Saphira. Saphira is a card, you know, as being a light ritual, six star, it, it naturally seemed to fit into Cyber Angels. People had taken different sides, people were arguing it's a dragon, you know, um, but well, you're the Cyber Angels player, what, what's your assessment on Saphira? So I was very interested in trying it out, um, like you said, it looked like it fit, not just because it's a six star ritual with like a solid stats and everything, but um, also because the effects that it had, every turn, I forget exactly what the word, but it was like every turn your opponent could discard, um, you could bring something back, or you can draw and uh, and discard something, or something like that. And so all of those three effects are very good within the Cyber Angels deck. So this card on its face definitely fits into the deck. It, it was a great... Uh, it would be a great inclusion to the deck. The problem, or, you know, from Saphira's standpoint, is that it is a very tight deck. There's only, you only want 20 slots because you don't want to, you know, weaken your draws. And so you're running three Dakinis, uh, three of the other one, and then one of, uh, I guess, three Ben 10 and one of Ida 10. And so you've got your searchers, you've got your rituals, you've got your ritual monsters, and then, like we talked about, that leaves you with three spots. 
So if you're running uh, Safira, you're either cutting your um, your tech cards, those three spots, into zero or maybe just one if you're doing the bare minimum for Safira. Um, and you are or you're kind of weakening your other things by adding uh, rituals that don't work for the cyber angels or cutting maybe a Dakini or a Benton or something. Uh, and basically just in playing it, I decided that I'm almost never want Safira over the cyber angels. So um, almost every single time that I'm using like a searcher to grab stuff, I would rather be getting a cyber angel piece and uh, um, if I just draw Saphira naturally, it's not as good as drawing the Cyber Angel pieces naturally. And sometimes it messes you up where, like, you want to summon Cyber Angel, but you only have the Saphira ritual or something like that. Right. And, um, and then on top of that, even if I were to want it, um, you, you really like those few tech slots. I mean, they make just a little bit of a difference but it's enough to kind of put you over the edge where uh, an actual ritual an extra ritual summon wouldn't do that or maybe you don't even have the the fuel for it because you obviously are losing a lot of card advantage every time you ritual summon and uh part of the good aspect of cyber angels is that you're losing a lot less of that card advantage because the cards kind of you know recur themselves and stuff so much but Still, the point stands that you can only do so many rituals per turn. And basically, I just decided that it's not worth it in the deck, where I was really excited to try it in there. It looks like it would fit really well, but I just it's not worth the slots, in my opinion. Do you think Saphira can you know be its own deck without Cyber Angels, or do you think it needs them? I think it can be its own deck, but I think that that deck is significantly weaker than Cyber Angels. Um, right. People were talking about switching out uh, Dakinis, right. like you only need two Dakinis or something, and Dakinis is just so good. You really want um, the three Dakinis, you definitely want to summon one, at least one every game, and they're also the best fuel for themselves, because it's just a eight star into eight star, so... Um, I just think it's much. It's just a much stronger card, and Saphir is a very strong effect. And I am almost certain that if we didn't have Cyber Angels in the game at all, Saphir would see some play um, in its own deck. Like you said, um, the Thunder Dragon interaction is pretty cool. It would be a solid deck, but it's just nowhere near as strong as Cyber Angels, and it's not worth diluting Cyber Angels for. Mm, yeah. Uh, Gladiator Beasts. Mm -hmm. It's better than we expected, but you know, a lot of people who played the card game knew how good Gladiator Beasts were. They're here. Um, what are your experiences playing as Gladiator Beasts? I beat some in the Kaiba Cup, but I kind of went through it not knowing what the cards did because I didn't feel like clicking on the cards, but I still won <laughs> the game. I still won the game, but it was a very competitive game. Uh, <laughs> that's all I could say. Yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of in the same boat where I didn't know what they all did. I was kind of just along for the ride. Um, I think I ended up winning that one as well. But the version that I played against was in the Kaiba Cup, and I think I've only faced it once or twice, but uh, I think twice maybe. The version that stood out to me as pretty cool was the one that was using um, Taya's ability, I believe it's called Holy Guard, where you don't take combat damage on your own turn. And so he was using it to... Uh, he was using all the cards that kind of turn my guys sideways into defense position. Um, and then he was just running his dudes into my defense position guys so that he could then use the, uh, you know, special effect that when they get resummoned, they can destroy your monster or they can destroy your back row or something like that. And it was a really cool um, take on it. You had kind of looked into the deck a little bit more than I did and uh, said that that's not exactly the standard uh, skill set and that people use so I appreciated that guy's efforts yeah that's all that's all YouTube Dan we would say he he invented that typically uh, gladiator beasts have mind scan or um, balance because mind scan totally makes sense 
uh, to know if you're going to be safe after you attack into something to abuse the tag out ability of the cards. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely an emerging archetype. Uh, we're going to talk about the tiers in a bit, but it's going to be here to stay, I think. I feel like they're too good to not. Um, and we're going to have this box for a little bit, I think. We're not going to get a new box for until the Kyber Cup ends. So, Well, for sure different. then, but probably a little longer as well. Yeah, we've had a spree of new sets recently. So we could take like at least a month. <laughs> at least a month before a new card. I agree. And, yep. yep. Overall, you know, I was down on the set, and then I, I got excited again. But it's not the best box, I think. But Gladiator Beasts are definitely worth getting, and certain cards are worth getting, too. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some solid stuff in here. It's still definitely not, like, the best deck, but... Uh, or, sorry, the best uh, box. But it's definitely solid. And uh, maybe if you have some extra gems, you can get into it, but... Now that Saphir is not as good as I had kind of hoped it would be, I'm a little bit bummed that I put so much into it. But maybe I'll pick up Gladiator Beast and feel better about it. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to start buying it once my gems get higher. Because, you know, the Kyber Cup just gave us so many gems. But um, let's move on to the Duel Links meta updated tiers. So, um, you know, the, the, the Discord channel, they had a, a set list of... You know, top tier decks, Cyber Angels, Red Eye Zombies for quite a bit. And yesterday I checked the Discord and um, a, there was a lot of shifting. And a lot of the junk decks were actually gone to dismay of some people. <laughs> but um, we, we, these are these are the updated tiers. Cyber Angels stands alone as tier 1. Red Eye Zombies and Ninjas are tier 2. Tier 3, you have Ancient Gears, Burn Decks, Gladiator Beast, and Hazy Flame. Tier 4, you have Control. Dinosaurs, Horus, Mill, and Phoenix Nephis. It, I guess it says something that Cyber Angels, like you predicted, that they're still as good as being the standalone Tier 1 after all the nerfs. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Um, I think it's a good indicator that the nerfs were a good call. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that even after nerfs, it's still the top deck in... Uh, I, I mean, obviously, DK's not like speaking for... Uh, the company or anything like that. He doesn't have access to those stats, but he and his community are a very influential one within this game. So um, the fact that they, he and they think that it's still the Tier 1 deck, the only Tier 1 deck, is very important. And I think that's also the reason why you don't see any of the Tomb Barrel Dragon, because it's just a terrible matchup for that deck. And before, when I was talking about decks that might be good in the new meta... I thought that Cyber Angels would fly under the radar a little bit. I knew it was still going to be good because I'd been testing it and it still worked. But I thought that a lot of people would be discouraged by the nerfs and uh, kind of give up on it and move on. Because we've seen that in other games and um, a little bit in this game as well. Where as soon as something gets nerfed, it just kind of completely falls off the map, even if it's still decent. And so I was thinking that in that absence of cyber angels uh the tomb barrel dragons could come back and that didn't happen because people immediately realized that cyber angels weren't nearly as hurt as they uh they might have been considered before the nerf so i guess this nerf wasn't as um misunderstood as others or as i thought it might be and so that made for a slightly different meta than i was expecting yeah there's definitely at least a drop off uh, playing PvP since the nerfs, that you definitely saw fewer Cyber Angel decks. But I've heard they've come back in the Kyber Cup, where if you get to a certain duel level, all you see are Cyber Angels. People know, people. Well, the people at that level know, but the people in the lower levels might not know they could gain ten levels just by switching over to Cyber Angels again. Yeah, I think that that makes sense. Um, a lot of people also just like to try new stuff, but. Uh, what we've seen so far is that mostly those lower levels in that first stage of the Kaiba Cup are um, people who maybe aren't as uh, devoted to the game. Like you said, you, you face someone who had been off for a couple months. I've faced a lot of people who um, have like, you know, the 30 card Power of the Dark type decks where uh, it makes me believe that perhaps they're not 
as in tuned with what's good in the de- uh, in the game, or maybe they're just newer to the game. Um, so I think the Kaiba Cup brings out a lot of people who maybe don't normally compete, and so those first rounds are going to be a little bit easier. And they're just trying to get a few levels, and you get like a lot of gems for each level. Uh, oh yeah. I, I forgot to mention I faced a Ancient Gears deck, and the whole game he never played an Ancient Gear card. No, oh, no. So but he, he just had the castle. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a nice castle. Yeah. <laughs> um, notable ninjas are tier two now. We, you know, it sucks that we both don't play ninjas that we don't know like how good they are. But you know, I can understand it being pretty good because it banishes cards. Yeah, and it's also a little bit of a bummer because it, it is one of those more complicated decks in the game. So right. it. Uh, it seems like it'd be kind of fun to explore and learn it because it has more going on than does a lot of other decks. But most of the cards are from Electric Overload, right? I don't remember which set it was, but there was a good amount that came out in one set. But then there was also the Ultra Rare that came out in like the next set. Oh yeah, so, Beast. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Tier three, yep. Tier three are kind of like the competitive decks, but they're not. You know they'll win. A, they'll win their fair share of games, but they they probably don't have the highest win rate compared to Cyber Angels and Res. You know, Ancient Gears is definitely going to be there. Uh, Gladiator Beasts. Gladiator Beasts are the one that we are keeping our eye on that could move up. You know, right away. Hazy Flame as well. I think Burn's just going to stay here as you know it's going to steal win here or there, but it's not going to be like the best deck. It's the type of deck uh, that we talked about before, where the power level is a little bit contingent upon the surprise factor and the fact that people aren't um even if they're not surprised by like what's in the deck they're not building their decks uh, to counter it so it has that cap where if it becomes meta it will immediately get shut down because it's very um i don't know it's it's very uh, fragile i would say where if people start building against it and they know exactly how to play against it, it's not nearly as good. And Ancient Gears just destroys Burn. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll get so pissed off when I lose a game, but I'm going to win like 70% of the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that too then. Yeah. And then, you know, the Tier 4 decks, Dinosaurs kind of made it uh, out of nowhere from, you know, that tournament. That, that Tecumseh brought a dinosaur list and then they're pretty good now. Horus... Um, Mill, Nephis, Nephis never really left. It, it used to be like tier two, tier three, I think, and it just dropped off a little, just because monsters are. It it doesn't get over like it, the Nephis doesn't get stronger besides beatdown. I think that's like its limitation. Yeah, it's always been an interesting deck. I thought for a while it was kind of overrated, but um, it, I mean, there's definitely some power there, and so I guess this seems about right to me. Um, so now we're going to move on to the card trader removing cards. Uh, you know, the card trader had a set of cards for a while and we just kept getting more and more and we're finally losing 17 of them. And these are actually some of the good ones. Uh, Twin Barrel Dragon, Guardian Angel Joan, Swarm of, Lo- Swarm of Locusts. I actually have zero of that card, so maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and Polymerization. Yeah. Um, some of these are kind of old standards. Uh, Twin Barrel Dragon used to be the best four-star monster in the game, uh, at least in my opinion. I was putting in like every deck. Uh, Guardian Angel Joan is somewhat relevant, even still, for three-star demotion slash mausoleum decks, but um, probably her heydays passed as well. Swarm of Locusts is just a good card that we've seen a little bit of here and there. And Polymerization is kind of like a staple and like... Not even a staple to any particular deck, really, these days, but just like to a whole area of the game and a whole style of play that might even get more involved going forward. So it's a little bit interesting that it's leaving. You can you still get, get it for it. free, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. You can still get it by uh, buying other stuff, but you, you want to make sure, or for free. But you want to make sure that you can get, uh, you have a playset of it at some point, and just kind of, I, that's just something you want to hold on to at some point. It might come up. Right. 
I remember before Jith came out, I only had two polymerization, so I bought one, and then like Jaden had one automatically, so I was like. <laughs> mm. So Jaden has not one, too many. Uh, and Joey has one, right? So their no, their boxes have one, but then they just come with one when they when you get the character. I think. Yeah, I know Joey comes with one, and I know that um, there's the boxes that have them. So I was just trying to keep track of how many people. I, th- would I have a feeling have. some of the uh, some of the other GX characters have it too. I think, like, mm. um, well, Aster doesn't, but I think Alexis does. I'm not positive because they come with like the Blade Skater, and that's like a fusion monster, right? I think. Well, maybe that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yep. But yeah, just just check out how many polymerizations you have, I guess, and get one if you if you're below three, I guess. <laughs> That's the lesson. Yeah, because otherwise you have to buy the the starter deck, and uh, you might want that, but you uh, you might not want to have to spend that mon- that many gems or real money uh, for that. Yep. Uh, take a quick survey to get a free SR ticket. Definitely do this. Uh, you know, we do the surveys for free in general, so now we actually have an incentive. So everyone should do it. You know, a free ticket. Um, yeah, no reason not to do it. <laughs> I d- I just looked it up and I have five polymers stations. So I guess you're right. Maybe maybe you just automatically get. And I didn't buy any of the starters, so maybe that's why they are taking it out of the card trader because they're just giving you three instead. But uh, you, yeah, check. Just go ahead and check and make sure, um, because you're going to want three at some point in your life playing this game. Yep. So do that survey. Yep. Get the SR ticket. Uh, 1.5 experience campaign, again, it's going to end tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we, we had a time where we had three ongoing events. That was pretty cool. Like, last week, we had yeah. the bonus rewards. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, definitely dual. Uh, Paradox Brothers and Pegasus added to Dual Gate, so people are getting their third copies of Relinquished. And, um, you know, just see if you're missing any of the cards. I'm sure there are farming decks online now to see, uh, you know, what cards you're missing. Yeah, the only thing I'm missing right now is one Toon Mermaid, I think. Um, so I might go in and grab it at some point. But the... I guess the point is don't use your SR tickets on the Toon Mermaid um, or anything else that you can now get through the gate. I don't think that their rewards are that great. Um, Relinquish doesn't see play anymore, even though it used to be my baby and it used to be the very best deck in the game. But it'd be nice to have a third copy and uh, those other things as well. Nothing really seen play now, but maybe at some point you'll want them so you can grab them when you have some spare time. Yep. And the Kaiba Cup round one is live. Uh, you know, there are some differences from the previous Kaiba Cup to what we, we've done before. So we were kind of caught off guard, but this version is a lot better uh, in terms of rewards. Um, the The first few rounds are pretty easy. And, you know, I was at 12 and I got knocked back to 11. You know, maybe as time goes by, it'll get even easier. But, you know, just know that it, it starts off really easy and then it's just going to go up. Tremendously, I think. Um, at least when you get to 15, I'd say that's probably going to be where the main competition is. Um, there's a new format for round one. Uh, we're not counting our points yet until round two, what we think. Um, and we ex- we previously thought that I couldn't get in because I didn't get King of Games the previous month. But King of Games just allows you entry in- into round two. So deck tech basically doesn't have to get 20, but I have to get 20. That's basically what it means. Yeah, I wasn't confused by that. You just weren't paying attention. You need to listen to the <laughs> show, man. <laughs> I can't. I can't listen to the show. Um, and you don't need to win five in a row to progress. Uh, we don't really know how it works, but I lost a game once, and then I could still progress the, next, the, the following game. So there's like a lot of factors about how you win the game, or if there are disconnects, or if there are time limit, time limit losses and stuff like that. Yeah, we got a notification that they're working on like servers or or that they had worked on servers. So maybe that's fixed now. And there was also a notification that if you stall the game, they're going to take action on you. Yeah, I, I actually like that. Yeah, um, I love that. 
So I'm glad that they're kind of taking a proactive approach. I also saw on Twitter that a couple people, including some high profile people, I think um, Shady Penguin was one of them, who they were talking about how they were like stuck in a time loop where for some reason it would um, cue them against the same person yeah. in multiple matches and then give them the same cards. That's so weird. Oh yeah, and there was this thing that I was involved in where it disconnected for five minutes and then I still got to face the guy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a few hiccups, but um, all in all, it is. it looks like they're working on them and it's mostly going well. I personally haven't had any issues. Um, and like we were kind of alluding to before, you get a ton of rewards just for playing it. So even if you don't plan on um, trying to hit 20 or even if you don't plan on getting, you know, competing at the next level, I certainly don't plan on like qualifying for world champs or anything, but um, it's a good idea to just play it when you can, maybe in lieu of ranked this season because the rewards are just really good for participating. And they count towards the hundred uh, games you need to get three SRs, anyways. Like the count, the ranked, the regular ranked awards still count. And I think it's 150 gems per duo level, so it's a lot. That is a lot. Yep. I I didn't pay attention to how many it is, but if it's that much, then yeah, you guys should definitely hop in. Good stuff. And there's floors, I believe. So when you get to five, you can't fall off five. When you get to ten, fifteen, twenty, I think. So. Um, you know, don't be discouraged about losing ranks. It happens. You know, take a break and then come back. And, um, you know, competition is going to get easier as the event goes on. So just keep playing. Yeah, for sure. All right. So the final segment is the dual school. And we're back with the top techs of the week for the Kaiba Cup. My top tech of the week is Soul Exchange. I forget what box Soul Exchange is, but it was a UR in some box. Do you remember what box it was from? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, it was a long the time. One with Dunam- the one with Dunamis on it, right? Yep. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. going to say. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> but um, Ancient Gears brought back something we haven't seen in the meta, which is Tribute Summoning. Um, you know, Red Eye Zombies and Nephis, they special summon. Cyber Angel uses Rituals. Uh, Three Star Demotion, Mausoleum. They use normal summons, but they just reduce the cost of the guy. So card like Soul Exchange, you never really saw for a while, but it's used for tributes. And Ancient Gears, you typically run a bit of tributes. You run two golems, two beasts, or people like me who are slackers and haven't leveled up <laughs> um, <laughs> Prowler to get the second golem. You have one golem and three beasts. So with the three beast setup, you just use Soul Exchange on the guy, and then you, you you summon a free beast on the board. So you sacrifice them for a free 2300 attack monster. And, you know, Soul Exchange gets around flip effects. I've actually seen quite a few Man Eater bugs in this game, in the Kaiba Cup so far. And there are certain cards that need to be destroyed by battle, like Warm Worm, for example. So you could sacrifice the Warm Worm and you won't lose your cards from your deck. Um... Also gets by Ritual Monsters, so the Cyber Angels are protected from destruction, but not from sacrifices. So you could tribute a Cyber Angel to summon a monster. And when you're playing Ancient Gears, you want to play around Floodgate Trap Hole. So, you know, sometimes you have to waste your castle if you have nothing on the board, and you play your Golem, and then it gets Floodgated. It's good to get an extra beast out to take a hit sometimes, like to take the trap. And then you could use your castle for your golem or another beast later on. So it's definitely useful for getting an extra tribute out. And I would say I won most of my games in the Kaiba Cup thanks to Soul Exchange. Um, Nice. Yeah. I mean, you can't attack. The bad thing about it is you can't attack that turn. But in Duel Links, it's not like everyone's holding a whole hand of cards. So sometimes you're just taking their only monster, and then they draw into a trap, and then that's the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, uh, how many do you run? Well, I only have one, so... <laughs> okay, well, that decides and, it. <laughs> and, you know, like, I just have a ton of back row. Like, I have two mirror walls and two wall of D, three econs, so there isn't, like, a ton of space for me to do it anyways. But I only have one, so, yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> What's your top tech? All right, so, um, my card 
is Noblemen of Extermination. And um, as we were talking about before, there's a bit of a question as to whether this uh, counts as a tech card um, or if I'm cheating. But uh, the card is starting to see a lot of play in Cyber Angels. And um, the reason for that, I think, having played Cyber Angels, is that it works really well with Mind Scan because you can make sure to hit the thing that you want to hit. And because the Cyber Angels usually only need like a small opening to win the game. And I've seen people, you know, using uh, anti magic arrows in the past for a similar reason because you can just do it and win. But this works better because there are certain uh, spells and traps that will mess with you before combat. A uh, very obvious example is enemy controller. We've talked about it a ton of times before. Um, taking your own Dakini to kill it with itself is a huge tempo swing loss. Um, and if you can avoid that, then that's really powerful. And there's also things like Floodgate Trap Hole, which is a decent counter. Um, because it can, not because it destroys the deck, but just because it can kind of get you off the rails when you're trying to get your big tempo swing combo turn. Um, so if you can get those things out of the way ahead of time, then it's really good. Um, the Nobleman, just as a reminder, only hits face down things, and it can hit either spells or traps, but if you hit a trap, then it clears all copies of that trap from the, the both players' decks. But since you're Cyber Angels, you usually uh, don't run any traps yourself, so there's no downside to it there. Um, it could be solid in other decks as well, but... You obviously don't need it in Ancient Gears. Um, you might not have the slots in other decks as well. So um, this one's a little bit specific maybe to Cyber Angels, but I, I think that it's a really good card that's getting a lot more value now that uh, there are a lot more really powerful traps. So a lot of people are running um, two or three of at least a couple different traps. And I think we're probably seeing the most traps at this point in the game um, that we've ever seen in the game because there's so many really powerful traps in the game now. So uh, I think now is kind of the time for Nobleman to shine. Yeah. Uh, on that point with the traps, uh, I have seen Mirage Dragon as a tech card, you know, mm -hmm. just the counter traps. And people are kind of joking about this. But there is like a ten Kabuto Shen Elemental Hero Wild Heart deck. Like there's like these just fifteen hundred attack guys that don't get affected by traps and they're in a deck. Like <laughs> <laughs> um is, is is extermination good against the annoying decks like to kill massive morph? Like how does that work? Uh yeah, I mean it certainly can be if you don't have a target on the board yet, then you could get rid of all of copies of that. The issue would be like if you already have something on the board then they can just massive morph that target and then uh, that kind of makes it waste one massive morph but it doesn't make it uh, clear all of them from the deck the other problem is that they have a lot of different annoying cards <laughs> um, so it's hard like even if you target kind of their main core one which is the massive morph you still have to deal with the other ones but uh, there's definitely something there. One thing that it can do is, especially coupled with uh, Mind Scan, is that you can just pick the right target to make it so that they can't one turn kill you with their Amazonus, and, and then you kind of uh, you might not be able to win right there on the spot, but you have the huge advantage where you can get rid of their Amazonus, and they only have so many. So I haven't faced that matchup at all yet. Um, in the new meta, but I expect that it's definitely winnable and that this card could be a big help in doing so. There you go. Get that Nolan, man, if you're playing <laughs> Cyber Angels. Yeah. Uh, yep. So that's going to be it for us today. Um, thank you to the reviewer on iTunes. Uh, let me pull that up. Ask Suyo, I believe. Yeah, ask Suyo. Thank you for your review. Glad this podcast exists. 
this podcast offered more Duel Links info than I was expecting. And that's what we really shoot for, to, to, to give good advice. And thank you for the reviewer for helping our um, our visibility, I guess. Yeah, the reviews really help. Um, as we've mentioned before, it is hard to stand out in the um, in the store and the iTunes app and everything because there's so much of the SEO stuff overlaps with traditional Yu-Gi-Oh, which has been around forever. And so there's these podcasts that have like you know hundreds, thousands of reviews and whatever. So it every little bit helps and. Um, Reviews are great. Telling your friends are great. All of that. Um, just growing the community. We love to hear from you guys as well. Yep. So thank you very much, and give us reviews if you can. Um, yep, that's going to be it for today. Uh, find us on the App Store, Google Play, Stitcher, and others. Check out the podcast and more at our website, thedualassessment.wordpress.com. Uh, we have a YouTube channel as well, so you could you know listen to us there instead. Patreon.com uh, slash dual underscore assessment. If you like what, us, what we're doing, have any advice for us, let us know. Uh, email us at the dual assessment at gmail.com. And you can find us on Twitter, dual underscore assessment, me at Green Ranger HS, and Deck Tech at HS Deck Tech. Yep. All right. Have fun uh, playing the Kaiba Cup, everyone. Yeah, good luck, and see you guys next week. <laughs>